Hey guys, it's Caleb and welcome back. So in today's video, I've got some citrus, as you can see all around me here. I've got a few different varieties that I'm gonna be planting in the ground. And so I wanted to bring you along and take you through kind of the different varieties that I've got here and then go through the whole planting process for these trees. So this one here is a lemon maya or lemon maya. And this one originates in China and it's actually a cross, I believe, between a lemon and a more cold hardy citrus like a mandarin. And as well as that, they have more of a golden color as opposed to the lighter yellow. So these are really commonly grown in my region because of their cold hardiness. And also they grow fruit most of the year as well. So it's a really good variety to kind of provide you with lemons throughout the year. This one over here is a Tahitian lime, and I believe these ones are crossed with lemons, which gives them more of a cold hardiness than like a key lime. And so they grow really well in our area, even though we get quite a few frosts. And the interesting thing about these is when they're ripe, they're actually yellow. And so you can still use them when they look more like a lime and they're more green in color, but they're just less juicy and less flavorful than if you let them turn yellow. This one over here is a kumquat nagami. It's one of the more commonly grown kumquat varieties, very cold hardy. And one of the cool things about kumquats, if you don't know much about them, is that you can actually eat the whole fruit. So the inside of the fruit's really sour, like a sour orange, but the cool thing is that the skin is quite sweet. And so when you eat them whole, those flavors blend together and provide quite a good balance of sweetness and acidity. The last tree that we've got here is a kumquat kalamondin, and I believe this isn't actually a true kumquat, it's one that's crossed with a mandarin, but you can use the fruit in much the same way. I believe if you eat them fresh, they're not quite as tasty as the kumquat nagami. As you can see, the top is not very bushy, and that is because the sheep managed to get through yesterday, and they chomped the top of this tree and this tree here, so I was quite gutted um, because they look like such good trees, but I guess that's what happens when you have animals. All right, so I'm looking at planting the citrus trees around this corner here, and this is quite a good spot because it gets a lot of sunlight, and citrus do need at least six hours of sun every day, and ideally more than that. And the good thing about this part as well is that we've got the driveway on the northern side, and so there's no trees there which would potentially shade the citrus out. So they've got the most northern spot, which is where all of our sun comes from here in the southern hemisphere. So the next thing to think about is the spacing of your trees and it really depends on what you're going for but for me I'm planting these in a line and I don't really want them to grow together too much and constantly cross over because it means that I'll have to prune more often and with these trees it can be a little bit hard to time when to prune because often they'll have the fruits on them and then they'll start to flower again for the next season and so if you go and prune at that stage you're going to lose a lot of your fruit for the next year. I'm going to plant them still fairly close together around two and a half meters but yeah just work out the size of the tree that you're planting or look it up and and then you can work out how much space you want around that tree. Anyway, on to planting the trees. So I'm removing the grass layer first, then digging a decent sized hole that's around twice as wide and a bit deeper than the existing pot that the trees are in. I'm also giving my trees a good drink of water before I transplant them. You can also use things like seaweed solution to reduce transplant shock, but I usually don't bother unless the plant is really root bound and the roots need a lot of disturbance to pull them apart, but otherwise just a good drink of water will do. As you can see, the soil here is pretty dry at the moment, so I'm just filling the hole up with water to help get some moisture in the ground and also test how fast it drains. It's all drained out within a couple of minutes, so it's good to see that roots of the trees won't be sitting in water for long periods. So native soil is usually the best thing to plant your fruit trees into, but keep in mind for citrus, you do wanna make sure the soil has good drainage so that you don't run into disease issues later on if the ground is left to become soggy. If you have poor draining soil, you could look at amending the soil a bit by mixing in a bit of compost, which should help to improve the drainage and also add some beneficial microbes into the soil. If you do decide to amend with compost, just make sure you mix it in really well so that your tree is still getting used to the native soil. That way the roots are encouraged to spread out further than just the planting hole. So with removing the tree from the pot, you can see there is a bit of a dry spot, so I haven't quite watered it enough, but it should still be fine. I like to scuff up the sides of the soil and tease the roots out a little bit to help them grow out into the native soil. And you especially want to do this with any roots that are circling around the pot. If your tree's really root bound, you do need to tease the roots out quite a bit and they should handle it, but just be aware that this can cause them to sulk a bit. So ideally it's best to buy trees that aren't root bound in the first place. So make sure you get the levels right for your tree. I'm planting mine just slightly above the existing soil line to make sure excess water doesn't pool and it can easily drain away. Just make sure as well that your tree hasn't been buried too deeply in the nursery pot. So if you look at where the first root flare comes out, you can kind of just leave that slightly above the soil and that way it should reduce issues with diseases later on. To make the tree nice and secure, I like to compact the soil a bit as I go, which helps to remove any air pockets as well. And I'm just giving it a good soaking of water now since the ground is pretty dry. Just make sure not to add heaps of water to loose soil before you compact it as it will turn to mud and you won't be able to pack it down nicely. So always pack the soil down first before you're giving your tree a good drink. 
For the Kalamondan and Kumquat tree that I've got, these are quite tall skinny trees and they could be potentially damaged from the strong winds we get. So I'm using two bamboo stakes, pushing them in outside of the current root zone and then just using some soft cotton ties and loosely tying these on. I'm putting the ties loose enough that the tree can still be moved around by the wind as this is important for the tree to strengthen up. I'd only recommend staking your trees though if you think you need to. All right, so that's one tree planted. So I'll move on now to planting the other three trees before we move on to the next step. I'm just gonna quickly stop here. So for this lime tree, there's quite a lot of limes forming. So I'm gonna cut these off so the tree can focus on getting established instead of using a lot of its energy developing so many fruit. And this should hopefully set the tree up for much better success in years to come. All right guys, so it's looking good, but we are not finished yet. The next step is to mulch the trees. I'm first gonna use cardboard to put around the trees to stop any weeds coming up. And just a pro tip with cardboard, if you wet it down first and let it soak in, the tape comes off really easily. I'd recommend mulching your trees at least as far out as the drip line of the tree, so the very outer leaves, and you can use whatever mulch you want, just make sure you keep it away from the trunk of the tree. For me, I'm gonna mulch this whole strip to make mowing a lot easier, and I plan to fill the spaces in between the trees with some other plants. I find that cardboard and mulch pretty much stops all the grass and weeds from coming up that I've got here, although some of the more deep-rooted weeds like dock or dandelion do seem to manage to get through, they seem to have enough energy stored up in the roots. I usually don't mind though as they have their uses in the garden and you can just chop and drop the plant down which is what I do, so I just rip the leaves off and leave them on the ground to decompose back in the soil. Alright so I'm just finishing the mulch up and getting it nice and thick. I reckon it's turned out pretty good but there is one more thing that I'd like to do today. We get a lot of wind here on our place and I found that windbreak material does help young trees get established. We did this with our Casimiro tree which is a citrus relative and since then it's really taken off and I think a lot of it has been helped because of the wind protection we've given it. So I'm just whacking some bamboo stakes in and we're just going to put some windbreak just along one side where we get a lot of our wind and that should be enough to help the trees get established while they're young. So these trees are all set up now and ready for autumn and winter. Once spring hits and the trees have settled their roots in the new area, I'm planning to pull away a bit of the mulch around the trees and do a top dressing of some compost to give the trees a good boost over the spring and summer when they're more actively growing. Alright, so it's all done. I'm really happy with how it's turned out and I think it'll be quite a nice continuation from the Fijo hedge curving around this corner here. If you enjoyed today's video, then make sure you give it a thumbs up down below. It's starting to rain, so I better cruise off, but I look forward to sharing with you more about these trees as they continue to grow and as I get to try those kumquats for the first time, that'll be pretty cool. But if you have any comments or questions or things to add to the video, then make sure you leave those down in the comment section below. But otherwise, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.